So you're looking to understand the $3 billion dream machine that is Google Ads. You're looking to figure out how it works, why it works, and really what matters and what doesn't matter in the actual Google Ads system. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how Google Ads works, what matters and what doesn't matter. And we're going to actually break it down so just about anyone can actually understand this. It's gonna be quite simple. Google Ads, for whatever reason, makes it very difficult and complex to actually understand its system, but it's not actually all that complicated. So I'm gonna do my best to make it as simple as possible so anyone can understand it. Now to start off, if you didn't know, Google Ads uses a thing called an auction system. And essentially every time someone types in a keyword inside Google Ads, Google Ads auction system determines where to place your ad and in what position. Now you could appear in the first place, second place, bottom of the page, not even on the page. It all really depends on a whole bunch of factors. All these factors, if we actually go to Google Ads and we check them out, there's five main factors Google Ads gives us when it comes to determining where we position in the actual auction system. It breaks down into bid limit, quality of the actual ad, so quality score, uh, the actual impact of your extensions, ad rank, and the actual context of your ad. Now, all of this may sound complex, but for the most part, it breaks down into two things. One, how much are you willing to pay for your actual position inside Google Ads, because Google Ads likes money. And two, how relevant is your actual ad? How high is your quality score? So I'm going to go over these two things in detail because they're really the most important things inside Google Ads that determine long term success. So to start off, let's actually go over cost per click because this has changed recently and really all the way up to the early 2010s. A lot of people were still using manual CPC and I see people to this day still using manual CPC and essentially what manual CPC is, is you determine how much you're willing to bid on every single keyword. Now, this used to be prominent back in the early 2000s, not as much now because automated bidding strategies have taken over and they're much better for the most part. And really cost per click isn't what it used to be. You can bid a whole bunch more with cost per click and you still see amazing results. And the reason for this is Google's AI has gained the ability to look at a whole bunch of different buying signals and look into audiences, look at the time of day, look at to, you know, device being used, search history, all this stuff. It has all this data in it and it can go, yeah, that person has like a 90% chance of buying or purchasing or, you know, contacting you for a quote. So what this essentially means is just because we have a high cost per click doesn't mean we can no longer bid for this. It used to be that we would set our bid limit for $8 and we would not spend any more than that. Now, since Google's AI has gotten so good, and I'll show you a little diagram on screen of what I mean, essentially, if we had a guaranteed chance of always converting someone at $20 and we were only willing to spend $25 per lead, Google would still pay $20 a cost per click. I know that sounds really high, but if we were guaranteed that lead, it doesn't matter. As opposed to only spending $5 a click and not getting those leads, Google's AI understands that, hey, just because it's high doesn't mean we still can't make money off. Of it. So that's a nice little thing that Google's AI has done. It has freed up our ability to bid on a much higher level and really making cost per click less of a factor inside Google Ads. Now, one thing I would mention about cost per click is that in order for Google's AI to figure out which keywords to bid on and which keywords are actually worth it and not worth it, it needs a lot of relevant data. So what we recommend for most accounts in the first month and the first 30 conversions is to put it into maximized clicks, at least for lead generation companies. So you're trying to get as many leads in as possible, put it into maximized clicks, let it run, let it collect 30 conversions, and then switch it over to target CPA or maximize conversions, and then let Google's AI do its magic and bring your cost per lead down and let it bid on all the keywords that are actually going to make you a whole bunch of money. Now, the reason why this is important is because maximize clicks does a great job at collecting a whole bunch of relevant data. And then essentially we shift it over to the AI. And then we say, here's all this relevant data, go to work. And it does its job very well. If it doesn't have that relevant data, it's going to be very slow and generally doesn't make the best decisions because it doesn't have that relevant data and who can blame it. It just doesn't have the data. So it has to take time, right? That's a great strategy for optimizing when it comes to actual cost per click and making sure you can bring your cost down very quickly. Now, moving on to quality score, what is quality score and how does it affect our actual performance inside the Google ads auction house? Now to understand quality score and what it means is essentially how much Google ads likes your advertising. Does it like your landing page? Does it like your actual ad? Does it like the keywords you're targeting? 
That's essentially quality score and it ranks it on a scale from one to 10. Five is going to be about average. It's not gonna dock you any points, but it's not gonna give you any points. And essentially above five, Google's gonna give you a little bit of a discount and below five, it's gonna cost you more money because Google doesn't like your ad. It doesn't think it's relevant to its customers. And the issue with this is if we have a low quality score and we also have a cost per click that maybe isn't that high, our ad isn't gonna be showing all that often. However, maybe we don't have a massive budget, but we have an amazing quality score, a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, our ad can actually display above the competition, which is amazing for small businesses, because if they're willing to take the time to be relevant and actually target good keywords, have a good landing page, have a good ad, you can beat these very large companies just because they're not willing to take the time to do this. So this is great for small businesses because it does give them the ability to advertise against these large companies, especially if they're being very specific on what they have to offer. Now, quality score breaks down into three different factors. The first one is going to be our actual click through rate. So how often are people clicking on our ads. If our ads show 100 times and someone clicks on it 10 times, we have a 10% click through rate. And depending on your industry, that could be good, that could be bad. You'll have to actually look that up online. You can check out WordStream. They have an amazing document for all the industry averages for click through rates. That's what we use. And it does a wonderful job at averaging out where it should be and what we should aim for. And essentially click through rate is how much someone actually likes your ad. Is it relevant to them? Are they going to click on it? This is essentially what determines the click-through rate. The second factor of quality score is ad relevance. And this is essentially the relationship between the search term someone actually looked up and your ad. And are these two things strongly correlated? You can see this to great effect with ad groups. And when someone creates an ad group and they'll put 500 different keywords in it and they'll have one ad, Google recognizes this as not very relevant because how can you create one ad that is relevant to 500 different search terms? You just can and this is going to create a low ad relevance and this is going to lower your quality score so what google likes to see is very relevant ads that more often than not possess the exact same keyword the person is actually typing in this is why i recommend adding a lot of ad groups not killing it and overdoing it with hundreds of ad groups but making sure that the actual keyword appears in the actual ad you have that way google knows that this person typed in local HVAC services near me, and then your ad says local HVAC services near me, or looking for local HVAC services, something like that, that shows high relevance to Google, and that Google can go, yep, these two things are very correlated, there, there's a very strong relationship between the two, and there's more than likely high ad relevance. Now, does this always mean you're going to have high rele ad relevance just because you put the actual keyword in the title? No, uh, but it does give you a good starting point, and then you can start A-B testing from there. The third factor is landing page experience. When they get to your actual landing page and they look around, what do they do? Do they find the landing page helpful? Can they actually get a quote from you? Is all the relevant information on it? And Google essentially scans your actual landing page and figures out, is this relevant to the actual user? Does it have the correct keywords on it? Does it actually help the user at the end of the day? All of this stuff matters. And essentially quality score breaks down into three big components, keywords, ads, and landing pages. It's pretty simple, but you have to have all three very closely knit together and all three very relevant to each other. If they're not, you're going to lose a whole bunch of money because your quality score is going to be low. Now, once you've kind of understood this, you understand where you'll have to improve in the account. You have to really focus on one, giving Google's AI enough relevant data so it can go to work and figure out what keywords to actually bid on and which ones are most cost effective. And number two is always going to be optimizing your quality score. So going in and actually figuring out whether or not these keywords and ads and landing pages are relevant to your customer, always A-B test them so you can get a higher click through rate, you can get a higher conversion rate and making your account overall more successful, boosting your quality score to make sure you can get the greatest discount possible and make sure your ads are appearing over your competition. Now we do have an optimization checklist that will help you do this. It's completely free. It walks you through what you should be doing on a weekly, monthly and three month basis. It also allows you to jot down all of the results so you can see your results month over month. It's a great resource and I recommend anyone running Google Ads to have some sort of checklist so you don't forget uh, what you've done on the previous weeks and allow you to continue to optimize and see better results inside your account. The link for that is down below. Now I do have one big favor to ask, and if you've liked this video at all and, and gained anything out of it, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It really helps out the channel and it really helps it grow. So thank you very much in advance if you choose to do so. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding Google Ads, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to you. There's a lot of comments, so if it takes me a day, don't worry, I just, there's a lot of them, so I, I do take my time getting back to them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care. I wish you all well.